What is up, guys? It is the Blue Bloods here, back with another episode, and Grambling State is back at it again, landing their second quarterback edition since spring spring practice ended. Amani Gilmore came from North Texas not too long ago, former three-star prospect. They land another three-star quarterback, former Syracuse quarterback and Juco standout at Kilgore uh, Ju Junior College, Chance Amy, as he comes in as a huge addition to this quarterback room. And this QB battle is going to be one of the more interesting ones to watch in the FCS, man. I mean, you have Amy now, you have Gilmore, you have uh, Halloween, you have Julian uh, Chavez as well. There's so, many, there's so much talent in that quarterback room. It's going to come down to who fits what Hugh Jackson wants to do the most. But, man, this guy, this guy right here is an absolute baller, man. And 6'3", 191 from Tyler, Texas, was a consensus three-star recruit, top 900 player in the country, a top 26 dual-threat quarterback in the country, and a top 130 player in the Lotus state of Texas, held offers from Houston, Syracuse, Cincinnati, Bowling Green, Arkansas State had over 15 offers coming out of high school, was a first team all district selection his junior year, and he put together an absolutely massive high school career. When you look at just what he was, a two-time district first team honor Finalist for the 2017 American State Bank Player of the Year Award, presented to the top player in East Texas. Over his over his um, final two seasons in high school, over 5,300 yards of total offense, 53 touchdowns in just those last two seasons, and he he really did it all, man. And on top of that, was also a standout basketball player as well. Was an all was an honorable mention All District selection. In basketball as well, along with being a sprinter on the track and field team, you already see on the film how how athletic he is, man. When he gets in the open field, he is going to go make a play. He gets to Syracuse, red shirts his first season, played in a reserve role um, for Syracuse. Then he goes, then he goes to Kilgore uh, Junior College and puts on a show there, man. You see the highlights. He really developed as a passer at the JUCO level and had an outstanding JUCO career in one of the toughest JUCO conferences out there. And you see here, man, the number one thing he has is just the ability to go make a play. He is, he is able to get out of the pocket, make plays with his legs, make plays with his arms, and one of the more underrated aspects of his game is his ball placement. He has, he has great accuracy, great pocket presence, and really and truly when you look at his skill set, it fits what Hugh Jackson wants to do. Hugh Jackson wants a quarterback that can go make plays in a multitude of ways. He wants a gamer back there, and he has a bunch of guys in this QB room, including Chance Chance Amy, who are going to be able to do that. And the, the number one thing for him is just to, coming in. He's getting in here late, already June 7th, as he announced his commitment. He's got to get in learn the playbook, build chemistry with the wide receivers, make sure he builds chemistry with the offensive line, and just, I would say, ingratiate himself in the system. That's the number one thing that I think is the is the next part of the process. But the talent is there, the experience is there, the athleticism is there, the ball placement is there, the arm strength is there. Everything is right there for him. And I really am interested to see, looking at all – you know, potential four quarterbacks, they all have their pros and cons. When you look at, um, you look at, you look at, uh, Julian, the, the true freshman, he comes in, not much experience, but he comes in as a very, very highly touted kid out of high school. And he potentially could work his way into some sort of rotation, a chance to, you know, potentially even win this QB one role with the new head coach. You never know. You look at, you, you look at Gilmore, ha has the arm strength, has just that pure ability to go make plays. I like what he brings. Halloween is probably the pocket passer of the four where he just has a ridiculous arm, but he doesn't have the athleticism. I think we're going to see in Amy right here where he he looks like, in my opinion, Amy's probably the best athlete in this QB room right now for Grambling. And so I'm really interested to see when he gets to campus, how is who is going to fit Hugh Jackson's system the best. Now I did talk to my guy over at Grambling. Can't give his name away. He said that he likes he likes chances um 
chance to get the starting role that he thinks that this kid has enough ability to be QB one. But now Grambling, the number one question mark from this squad last year was the QB position. They were the worst passing offense in the SWAC. They had more interceptions than touchdowns last year. The offensive consistency was not there. They bring in an entirely new offensive staff, an offensive-minded head coach. They got four new quarterbacks on the roster. This team is primed to, to look completely different from the 2021 season. If, this, if the defense can keep up their level of play that they had last year and this offense can take multiple steps forward, Grambling State is going to be a problem in the SWAC West. And them, Southern, Texas Southern, Alcorn, is going to be an absolute dogfight for that West division. So I'm extremely interested to see what happens. Comment your thoughts below on Chance Amy announcing his transfer to Grambling State. What do you think he can bring? Do you think he fits the system? And who do you think will be QB1 for Grambling State entering the 2022 season? But guys, Head to our website for more recruiting content, thebluebloodspod.com. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, share this video, and stay, t- and stay tuned for more content right here on the Blue Bloods. But until next time, the Blue Bloods are out. Mm-hmm.